Mr. William Kojin, hello to you. And as far as I can see, you are in a very beautiful park of the Netherlands. Actually, I am. Yeah. yeah. I am in the middle of the country, in the Veluwe, as we call it. It's a very, very um, quiet part of the country because I'm in quarantine before returning to uh, Hauler. Aha, uh -huh. very good. Uh, so we will talk about your, your self-quarantine. But Mr. Cousin, coronavirus cases in the Netherlands reached over 32,000 32, and the death toll is really high. How is it now? Yeah. Well, when you compare actually the real numbers, it's actually it's much better now, that's good to say. But if you compare the real numbers, you see that out of a thousand people, two people unfortunately will perish from, uh, from corona. So the death toll is not that high, but still too high to accept. So um, uh, we are working very hard on putting corona down. And we do that via a lockdown, which actually uh, seems to work pretty well because the numbers of the infections are uh, decreasing rapidly. Uh -huh. Okay, so how about you and your family? Are you safe, doing well? Yes, we were uh, in, in we, we, are, we really followed our stay home policy. So uh, all the children and myself and my wife were at uh, our uh, different ho uh, houses because they, 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 they left uh, uh, my family, they're older and uh, stay inside, uh, go only uh, outside for, uh, for essential shopping, for example, and for the rest, stay home and uh, do some work and uh, watch some uh, Netflix. And uh, yeah, that's it. But they are doing uh -huh. pretty well, that's, that's good. <laughs> I see, I see. But while we are talking, as you mentioned, you are uh, in self-quarantine, am I yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Why you put yourself in self-quarantine? Well, because um, it's our mutual responsibility to make sure that we don't infect anybody. So um, I'm in quarantine together with a couple of people that will travel with me to uh, Kurdistan as well. And uh, we decided that it would be good uh, to do so to support uh, KRG, the Kurdish government, in uh, well, in this, in this, well, making everybody safe for infection. So I'm here quarantined together with people that come with me, and um, so we, we we will arrive completely healthy and not infected. Oh, so after the self isolation, then you are heading back to Erbil. Yes. Yeah. Which means how many? Which means how long does it take? I'm in self-isolation for two and a half weeks, uh -huh. and after that, I will return to, uh, to your place. Looking forward. <laughs> Very good. So, this is what the KRG requires from the people coming abroad, or you decided to put yourself in self-isolation? Yeah, that's actually, it's, it's our government policy that we are very careful with, uh, with uh, well, um, social context. We call that social distancing. So we always keep at a distance. And before traveling out, we go in quarantine. And that will meet with the, uh, with the demands of the KRG as well, who um, have a very rigorous quarantine measurement measure as well. So actually, um, yeah, it makes sense. And that's why we do it as well. Okay. So when are the measures likely to be relaxed in Netherlands? Yes, um, we, um, well, that is actually what, what the government, the Dutch government is looking very closely uh, at, uh, together with uh, experts. And um, they are on a day-to-day -day business looking towards um, the, the progress of, of bringing this coronavirus uh, down. And as soon as we get, get, can get more slack, as soon as we get more freedom of movement, we will get it. But we will be very careful, very careful. Um, there are a lot of people in the Netherlands, uh, 70 million people in a small country. And uh, so we have to be careful because we don't want the uh, coronavirus uh, to spread around. And I think that my government is doing a great job in, 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 in uh, well, preventing uh, more infections. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Recently, we saw the beautiful flowers of Netherlands disposed as a result of the coronavirus. What measures yes. are in place to support the economy in your country? Yes. Well, we have a lot of uh, small companies in the Netherlands. Obviously, we have the big companies as well, like Heineken, who are, uh, as a matter of fact, in KRI as well, like Philips, who is in the KRI, big companies. But we have, we have a lot of small companies as well. And the government decided that all the small companies that actually have to, uh, will keep, will maintain their personnel. So you keep your personnel, you don't fire them. And uh, that is very expensive for those small companies. So the government decided that they support these small companies uh, financially. And, um, and that means that uh, they get 90%, 90% mm. of uh, their wages when there is a loss of income. So my government very much focused on keeping people uh, at work, keeping them in their jobs. So as soon as the, um, as the corona virus is over or under control, they immediately can resume working. Okay. The National Day of Netherlands every year takes place on 27th of April. How yes. do you celebrate it this year? Do you think yes. the <laughs> pandemic will allow you to do so? Yeah, it is a bit different this year, obviously. Um, um, I don't know if you if you watch YouTube or, for, or your viewers watch YouTube, but the King's Day in the Netherlands is always one big orange party. As you may know, uh, the, the, this is the family name of my, my king is Orange. So when uh -huh. there is, uh, uh, like Luda, for example, uh, is orange as well, but um, you um, you see a lot of people dressed up in orange on King's Day, and there are big parties, there are many concerts. The king is going to a city where he celebrates his birthday with the people of the city. Uh, famous Dutch artists flying in helicopters all over the country, giving concerts in many different places. Uh, people on the streets uh, selling uh, their their their. Um, well, second-hand uh, stuff. Furniture. Uh, um, yeah, that's uh, like flea markets or free markets, as we call them. Uh, there's big parties um, for in, in sports. You know, it's always one of our very big parties in the Netherlands. Now it is completely different, completely different. So uh, we are very much a digital economy. So the Netherlands decided this year to celebrate King's Day digitally. Uh huh. Which means you, you know, no of these activities will take place this year. No, we do the stay home policy, uh, but we celebrate it from our houses. So um, there are many churches in the Netherlands, and, and I think at a quarter to ten later this morning, all the church bells will uh, make their. Uh, how do you call it actually? They uh, they don't ring because they're not telephones, but they they they. they uh, are, uh, they are out loud, and um, at uh, and then at ten o'clock we all sing the national anthem, and we're all reaching out via Skype, via digital uh, networks together to the king, so we can celebrate it digitally. Okay, very good. Now, let's move to your work experience in Kurdistan as a general yes. consul of Netherlands in OB. What yes. are your project is? What's your priority? Yeah. Um, we started in a KRI a couple of years ago. Um, and the KRI for us is really a very nice uh, region. Um, you know, um, there is a lot of opportunity for Kurdish people and Dutch people to team up together. And that is what we do. Uh, being uh, a representative from a smaller country, I really, I really thought two years ago when I started in in uh, Erbil, I, I thought, where can we really make a difference? Where can we really make a difference? And I think we really can make a difference in agri and food. Agri and food. When you look around you in the KRI, there is so much fertile land, and there's a lot of there are a lot of farmers, and people who are very much involved in the agri business. But like what we did 50 or 60 years ago, you still have to do that. And that is modernize your agrarian food. 
the Kerai could be an agri and food hub in the region, in that part of the world, for all the countries surrounding the Kerai as well. That's what we did in the world, and that's what we're going to do with you guys as well, with your support, so far, with your so help. So far, have you, have you done any uh, mutual projects with KRG and KDSR? Oh, yes, absolutely. In terms of um, what? Um, you know, um, there, is, uh, there are a couple of agri food projects that we will start together with you. We're working on glass houses in Erbil with the Sina Group the Cine Group from Airbill, who is looking closely into cooperation with uh, the Netherlands, uh, starting this big agri and food hub um, to feed the city, to feed our bill, uh, to start growing and to start educating people as well. Uh, but that's only the agri-food because there are, there are many more projects we do, but it's very, very close to my heart and I really think that we can make a difference over there. Can I ask you a question? Please, go ahead. But my position is just to ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll turn this one around. I'll ask you a question, you know. You know which country is the biggest exporter of fresh produce in the world? I'll give you the answer. Oh, for what? The for answer? flour, for what? For fresh produce, so that is vegetables, fruit, uh -huh. flowers, everything that is fresh in the market. Well, it's not the Netherlands. Actually, we are number two. Number one. You are is number the US. two. As far as I know, you yeah. you you produce you this uh, you produce forty seven percent of the flowers in the world. Yeah. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we do. Uh -huh. But you know, it's much broader than that. It's, it's not only flowers. It's, it's, it is fresh food, uh -huh. uh, healthy food, vegetables produced sustainable uh, with, with, a, with a friendly eye to nature, to the environment. You know, the biggest export of fresh produce in the world is the US, America. But number two are the Netherlands. And then when you compare the sizes of the country, you see that we are one of the smallest countries in the world. And that is actually what, I want to, what we want to do with you guys as well. That we set up with you a partnership, Curtis Dutch partnership, where we make you a very large producer and exporter of fresh vegetables, of fresh milk, of um, uh, uh, well, flowers as well. You can do everything together because the country, Kurdistan, is very uh, well positioned for being such a big exporter of fresh produce. But that's only work and income and, and, and agri and food because we do much more. Very good. Okay. Now, what kind of consular services do you have for people in Kyrgyzstan in your office yes. in Erbil? Yes. Uh, we have limited consular services. Um, uh, it grew. Uh, I'm looking into it. Uh, the consular service are very much um, focused on business visa. So one, when you uh, want to do business with Dutch companies, um, I'll, I'm play, I am the place to, to provide you uh, a visa. Um, obviously, it's a decision by another ministry in the Netherlands, but we are the window to the ministry and uh, you can come to us and we discuss the possibility of a visa. I, I, again, I want to ask you clearly, Mr. Consul, mm -hmm. do you issue the visa in Erbil? Yes, we do. We, uh, we have a, 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 yes, we do. We, we, is, we issue a visa in Erbil. Yep. And you encourage people to go to Netherlands, to see your country, to uh, understand the history of your country, the culture? Well, I have to tell you about history because our visa policies are limited. What we are, as a matter of fact, we are in the process of looking at our visa policy towards Kurdistan, uh, which is now mainly focused on business, business visa. Uh, but in the future, obviously, there will be uh, uh, more visas uh, to issue uh, when uh, the situation in the world actually is, is getting more stable. Okay. How about scholarship do you offer any kind of scholarship to the university yes. students in kurdistan yes we do um, we are very much working on um, 
Well, we do issue scholarships already for a number of years. So a number of Kurdish people go to the Netherlands and go to university, uh, which is good, which is good. But there is more that we can do together. Um, as I told you, we're very much working with you um, in setting up big agri and food companies. Um, what you need for those agri and food companies are people that are skilled, people that are trained, people that got the right education. So what we are looking into right now is that we not only build those glass houses or start growing potatoes with you, but that we train the people that will actually do the job, the Kurdish people. We don't bring in Dutch. We let it. Uh, we want to create, together with you, employment. So we'll train you guys to work in Kurdistan to produce your own food and to produce your own export. Okay, good. How many companies uh, have been working in Kurdistan region? I mean, companies from Netherlands before in yes. the pandemic, and in what sectors are their activities? Yes. Um, we are working, um, um, well, Philips is working with you, and Heineken, the beer company, is working with you. Um, we work mostly, the Dutch companies work mostly via, via agents. So there are a number of Kurdish uh, companies that, that um, work for Dutch companies, uh, as, as, as I said before. A very nice example of that is Keune, for example. Keune is this... The things you do in your hair, you can see I'm completely bald. So I'm I don't not have hair, so that's why I, don't, <laughs> I have no idea about it. <laughs> Same here. I don't use it because I'm uh, obviously almost bald. But um, you know, there's a big uh, fashion industry in Kurdistan. So there are a number of Dutch companies in fashion that work together with uh, you guys. And Kern is a very nice example of that. But as I said as well, in uh, the country, you see Shell, you see Boscalis, you see, um, well, as I said before, Philips, and Horty Excess. And Horty Excess is that company that, that builds uh, greenhouses in uh, Kurdistan. Another nice Kurdish partnership is KH, Kurdistan Holland Potatoes. They actually are the firm that started a couple of years ago, a joint venture, uh, that started a couple of years ago in in, in growing potatoes, and now they are the biggest potato exporter in the whole country. And they're providing potatoes to every corner of Iraq. That is a lead firm, that is such a nice firm. Okay. Mr. Consul, due to the war, there are many refugees and IDPs in Kurdistan. How is yes. the position of your government to provide the humanitarian aid of IDPs in Kurdistan region? Yes, we very much uh, support return of IDPs to their place of origin. Uh, we see that there is a big challenge in that respect in the Kurdistan region. And we really regret that not every IDP is is uh, capable of returning uh, to their own uh, the, well, the, the place for region. Um, and it will be that some of them won't return. Uh, so that means that you have to make sure that they integrate in society. And that's what we do as well. To name an example, in the city of Tohuk, we are very much working with authorities in creating um, um, well, a, a new part of the city where we provide employment, where we provide public services, and where we make sure that the people that came from other parts of the country can live happily um, in that city. Um, besides that, obviously, we spend uh, a considerable amount of money, to be frank, in in demining. Um, we really, um, via uh, large uh, international organisations, because to make to make it possible for people to return to their uh, to their own place of origin. Um, so yes. Um, um, it is, it, is, it is a big challenge, and, uh -huh. and we're trying to, to help you with that. Okay. Okay. 
The Netherlands played a good role in the coalition forces against ISIS and helped Peshmerga forces. I wonder yeah. if your contributions still continuing. Yes. If yes, what are they? Yeah, uh, we gave uh, air coverage um, uh, over the last few years, and very much. Uh, and now we are very much focusing on training Peshmerga. We have a lot of people in uh, in Erbil that are working together with Peshmerga forces to train them, uh, to make them even more capable, and to help them organize themselves. Um, that is what we do. Um, we have obviously um, 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 uh, well stopped our operations right now due to coronavirus because we don't want to infect you and we don't want to get infected. So uh, we have our stay home policy with those guys as well. But we are there and we are there to stay for the time to be. Um, we look at that every two, three years, but we, yeah, we will be around because there's a, there's a nice job to be done. It goes pretty well. And um, uh, that is one part, actually. On the uh -huh. policy part, on the policy okay. part, we made uh, an, uh, the Plan Holland for the, um, how do you say that, uh, the security sector reform. Um, we are very much looking in, you, as you will know, there are a lot of uh, people uh, working as a Peshmerga. And the Peshmerga force, or the security sector reform, is so large that it is very expensive for the Kurdish region. And we developed a plan where we um, uh, envisage a Peshmerga that is even more capable, that mm -hmm. is accountable to the public, and uh, that is uh, that is that is affordable. Um, we made a draft of the plan, and I can't be completely open it for, about ah, it because I I, I I think it's better to discuss it with uh, with yeah. your political leaders before I put it on the radio. But it's called the Plan Holland. I think it's a pretty good plan. And as soon as I uh, have returned to uh, to Kurdistan, I will discuss it with your leadership. By the way, when you are going back to Kurdistan, what you will first do? Um, go to the supermarket, buy some water, buy some fresh veggies, and um, and then um, uh, reaching out uh, uh, to you guys to see where we can help. Uh, a number of Kurdish Dutch actually um, has returned to the Netherlands, um, and um, you know, my, I have to look at it at the spot. Uh, but 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 I, but I really try to be within the limitations of operations right now, that we get on with the show as soon as possible, and and get a lot of things uh, off the ground. Um, so yeah, um, right. I really think that everybody's a bit a bit uh, slower now in in producing, and 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 as soon as it is possible, we'll get full speed ahead again. Hey, <laughs> anyway, looking forward to seeing you, Mr. William Cousin, the General Consul of uh, Netherlands. Your time is highly appreciated. Thank you.